friends! So today's video is going to be the third installment of my ranking my entire makeup collection video and today we're going to be talking about blush. So I have all 13 of my blushes here in a line on my bed and we're gonna be talking about them today. If you haven't seen my other videos, I was ranking my eyeshadow palettes and then my highlighters as the last two in the series. So links to those will be in the description down below. So let's just get started. So I do have a couple of blushes in here from brands that I don't purchase from anymore. So I will like, give like a disclaimer that like I still have a NARS blush and a MAC blush. Yeah, I think those are the only ones that I have that I, I don't purchase from actively anymore. So just be aware that I still own them, I still use them, but I don't purchase from them anymore. So we'll start with my first blush. The last one, the one I use the least, the one I like the least, I guess, um, and that is NARS Teos. And when I was looking through my blush collection, I guess I don't have Deep Throat anymore. I guess I did declutter that. I thought I still had it, but I guess I didn't. Um, this is Teos, which is a very kind of deep, kind of corally shade. Rude. Teos is very pigmented and very dark. So like I have to use a very light hand. Otherwise it looks a little bit crazy, so. There's that. In a similar camp, in terms of just being too dark and takes a bit for me to blend out and can get really crazy, uh, we have Storm from Glossier. Now, this one I will, it might be able to show up because it's a cream and it is hella dark. Um, it's a really pretty tone. It's kind of like a mauvey berry, a little bit browny, but it's very dark. And like, I have to use the lightest hand. Like that is like all I need pretty much for like my entire cheek. I did this earlier, I swatched this and this is stained. So if you like a stain, this one's good. I just don't use it a lot just because it can go overboard really, really easily. I'll get a lot of use out of it because I don't need very much to cover my whole cheek. I just, I don't use it that much. I don't use it. More cream blushes because I don't use cream blush very often. This is from the brand Peri Para, which is a a Korean brand I actually got from Yes Style a couple years back. It's a velvet, it's the velvet cheek thing. It's kind of a corally, rusty shade. The cream blushes definitely do swatch a lot better than the powder blushes, but um, I just don't use this one very much because again, I'm not a huge fan of cream blushes. I bought this because actually YesStyle had given me like a gift card to buy a bunch of stuff with and I was curious about a bunch of different Korean products. So I bought this. I like it, I just don't use it enough. And cream blushes just can get a little bit cumbersome for me personally. I did a whole video about cream products. Next, we have a blush that I haven't used enough to like really get like a lot of like love for it. This is the Sleek Blush in Rose Gold. It's probably expired at this point, but this is definitely like a, a drugstore dupe for NARS Orgasm. Um, it's very shimmery. It's very gold, pink, shifty on a deeper complexion. Like on a deep complexion, this would be a highlighter because it is very shimmery, is very shiny. Um, super reflective. So I can go real crazy with this real fast um, because it is very, very shimmery. It works really well if I'm doing like a kind of eye cheek kind of blush draping look because I can just put it on my eyes as well and just kind of blend it everywhere because it's it's pigmented enough to be kind of an eyeshadow. But I do like the sleek blushes. I think I had another sleek blush a long, long time ago that I got from a subscriber, but um, I don't know if they still carry Sleek at Ulta. I think, I think they do. But I know Sleek originally is a UK based brand. So if you live in the UK, if you live in Europe, I believe you can get Sleek pretty easily and they're pretty inexpensive for what you get. And it's compact, like it's not the smallest pan, like it's a decent sized pan, but there's not just like a bunch of excess plastic. So I like that it's like just really compact Next, uh, down the line, so that was 13, 12, 11, 10, nine, we have the uh, Glossier Cloud Paint in Puff. And this is the one I've had for longer. This is the first one I got. It's a really pretty shade. This is probably one of the, the coolest, like cool in terms of tone, coolest pink blushes that I have. That's it right there. It's nice. It definitely is easier to blend in than Storm because it's a lighter shade and it's 
it's pretty. I like it. It's just, again, cream products are not my forte as far as blush. I mean, as far as anything goes, really. Like, the only thing I want that's a cream is a concealer or a foundation. And even then, that's liquid. <laughs> yeah, just the cream products are kind of just all things that sit in my drawers usually. I mean, I use them, but not as much as I should. I travel with these though. When I do travel, when I do go to like festivals and stuff, I definitely bring these with me because they're a lot easier and I can apply them with my fingers and they're they're not gonna break. The next one in the line, which I believe is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have the Fenty Kilowatt Duo in Mimosa Sunrise and Sangria Sunset. I like this product. I do, I really like this product. This is definitely something that I wear as like a blush and eyeshadow kind of combo. Like I'll mix these two. I'll do kind of like a sunsetty look kind of all over again with like a blush draping type feel to it. It's definitely very shimmery. Like it was made as like a highlight. So it can get very glowy if I go to ham and it's very pigmented. Like these are quite pigmented. So they can be used as eyeshadows for sure. Let's see if I can put them. Yeah, see these definitely show up a little bit better on my hands. The orange is fun. I really like the orange. I like the orange a lot. I do like this. I think the orange would look really, really gorgeous. Um, if you have like a tan skin tone, like kind of putting the orange all over your cheekbones up into like the highlight area. Ooh, it'd be so pretty. I love this. So I didn't include the clown blush palette in this because I talked about it in my eyeshadow palettes collection because um, I use it also as eyeshadows. Um, so that one's not included in here as well as my Lunatic Cosmetic Labs palette because I don't, like I use the blushes, but I don't like think of them as like standalone blushes, you know? Um, next, we have um, Max Blush Baby. And now this one I've had for a very long time and I am determined to pan it. I should actually just put it in my makeup bag um, so I can use it more often. But it's just like a nude blush. Like it's nothing special. It's good. It's a good formula. I'm not saying it's bad. It's something that's easily dupable. I'm sure that there's a NYX blush that matches this perfectly. I'm sure that there's a Milani blush. I'm sure that there's a, plenty of other blushes that match this. This is the only MAC blush that I still have. I decluttered a bunch of MAC products that I'm waiting to actually like bring as a back to MAC thing. So I don't actively have them in my collection anymore. They're just like waiting to be recycled. <laughs> this is still the only one I actively use though. I like the color. I definitely do like the shade, like this kind of nude, beigey, pink kind of mauve moment. Like it's a really good neutral blush that works on like warm and cool skin tones. So really any tone like this, if I can find a dupe for this, I'll put a link to it in the uh, description. So that way, in case you were looking for a blush that's kind of like this, you can find one without supporting MAC. There's that. And then we have number six. Number six, we have Melts Blush Light in Lynx. And this is one of the newest blushes in my collection. Love it. Like I already love it so much. I wore this in my video from yesterday and I, I'm obsessed with it. Like I love the formula. It's like an apricot-y type shade. It's very similar. It's, it's glowy. It's not quite as glowy as the Fenty ones like next to it, but it's a really pretty like kind of bronzy apricot color and it's similar to NARS's Luster, which was one that I lusted after for a long time. I wish that all of their kind of highlighter blush things were in this size because I feel like I rarely ever finish a blush or a highlighter and I feel like this is just a better size because these are actually less expensive than the highlighters. Like the highlighters are like $38 and this was like 22. I much prefer this size for a blush rather than the giant powders that Melt has otherwise. I definitely like this formula. Like it's not too pigmented, but it's pigmented enough to where like, I don't have to like build it up and build it up and build it up, you know? Number five, number five, we have a blush that I talked about in yesterday's video, and that is Milani's Luminoso. And this is a very true peachy coral, shade. Um, this one probably isn't gonna show up as well because it definitely does have a shine to it, a sheen. And this one is definitely a lot more like easy to use on my complexion because it is a bit lighter. Like as you can see, these three right here are a bit darker. Luminoso is a lot more sheer 
on my face. So it, it takes a lot more for me to go overboard. I feel like this isn't the same formula that it used to be. I feel like they changed the formula because the color doesn't look exactly the same as the one that Nikki used. I don't know if they've changed it or not. If I'm remembering wrong, please let me know. Or if you also remember that the uh, blush in Luminoso looks a little bit different than it used to, please let me know in the comments or else I'm gonna think I'm crazy. So yeah, I just wish the packaging on this was better. It's the some of the worst packaging I have for any product. Some of the worst packaging. Like this in Physician's Formula, I don't own anything from Physician's Formula anymore, but this and Physician's Formula, the worst packaging you can get in the drugstore. Next. Now we have my top four, top four blushes. This is Pink Dahlia from Cover Effects, and it's one of their monochromatic blush duos, and I love it so much. I wear it all the time. I wear this shade, I wear this shade. I'm wearing them today, actually. Like, I'm wearing this blush today, kind of all over my face, a combo of the two, and I I love them. It's such a pretty pink. Like, it's not too cool tone or too warm tone to where it, like, reads peachy. Like, it's just, like, a kind of perfect pink shade. The formula on the Cover FX blushes are some of my favorites. Like, they're so good. Like, they're so good and I love them. I would own all of them, but I realized that there's like two or three of them that are like way too dark for my skin tone. The only other one that I'm like looking at is Soft Peach, but I feel like I need to swatch it in the store to actually like see if it's that different than some of the other blushes that I have. But Pink Dahlia is definitely one that is unlike any other blush that I have in my collection. And I'm glad that I have it because I like it a lot. Number three, we have Nabla's Nectarine. This sat in my drawer for a while and I forgot how much I did love it. I feel like the formula is really, really nice. It's like a kind of matte satin, matin kind of thing. Did I just make up a formula name? No. Definitely one that you can build. It's not the most pigmented when you put it on, but that also means that it's like just perfectly pigmented to where it looks really nice on the skin. It looks really natural on the skin. It looks, I don't know, it's like goes on so smooth. It doesn't get patchy because it's just the right amount of pigmentation. I definitely would buy more Naba blushes, but I don't need any more right now. If you're looking into trying some European makeup, obviously right now is probably not the best time, but when everything gets back to normal, I definitely um, recommend Nabla blushes. There's a couple other ones that I was eyeing and I didn't buy them all at the same time because they're not the cheapest things in the world. I really like the blush formula. I am still like eyeing those fucking highlighters, those fucking skin glazing highlighters. I missed out on the fucking Ulta 21 Days of Beauty because they went sold out like that. I was like, damn it. <sighs> Nabla, Nectarine. Love it so much. I also didn't include my contour powders in here because I don't count those as a blush. Technically Gotham is a blush, but it's a contour powder. <laughs> like I don't use it as a blush. So my top two blush is technically a trio of blushes. This is the uh, Hourglass Ambient Strobe Lighting Blush Palette. This was limited edition a few years ago, but the shades in here are Incandescent Electra, Brilliant Nude, and Euphoric Fusion. Um, I think Euphoric Fusion, I honestly don't know which shade is which, but they're all beautiful. I love the pigmentation on these because I don't know, I, this is the only Hourglass product that I own, but knowing how well this works and how this works makes me realize why people like Hourglass powders in general. This is the strobe lighting blush, so it's definitely more like glowy, but the way that this applies and the the pigmentation, it's buildable, but it's it's like it looks really beautiful on the skin. Like it's highlighty, it's glowy. Um, I really love doing nude on a day when I just am wearing so much color on my face and I don't wanna wear like a colorful blush um, or I'll mix the three of these together. I'll mix these two together probably the most or these two together. I usually won't mix these two cause they're kind of weird contrasting shades. Like this one's more peachy, this one's more nude and then this one's more of like a mauve -y undertone. These do not swatch at all really so I'm not going to. Um, but the finish of these particularly is why I like it because it's not, it's so beautifully glowy. I will say if you are 
like a bit darker than me, this won't work very well because it is so light. So if you are a pale ass bitch like me, these blushes are quite nice. I feel like I haven't tried their full size blushes. I don't know if it's the same formula, but like it's, they're, they're just beautiful powders. Like this, I don't quite remember how much it was, but there's a lot of product in here. And I feel like with how long I've used it, it's been worth it for me, but I don't think I would buy a full sized blush just because like they're really expensive by themselves. And I like having the versatility of having the three shades so I can mix them all together if I want to, but also just wear one by itself. And it's just, it's pretty. And with these, I don't necessarily feel like I need to wear highlight at the same time because it just like adds a nice sheen to my cheek. I'm wearing the um, Moonlighter highlighter in squid today, by the way. See how glowy that shit is? It's glowy as fuck. <laughs> now, last but not least, and I'm sure y'all are not gonna be surprised about this. Warm Honey from Cover Effects. Now, this is the first of the monochromatic blush duos that I bought, and it's quite dark. Like, it's a dark blush, but the tone of it is so pretty. This is the closest thing that I've been able to find to like a dupe. The shimmery side is the closest thing I've been able to find to a dupe of Max Warm Soul, that kind of like rosy bronze shade. It's just gorgeous. This very pigmented, like I will say, it's very pigmented. It's easy to go overboard, but it's so such a smooth formula and it's a really pretty like nude, Shade, it's that one on the top there. Oh, I love it so much. Like this is, while I'm a cool toned person, I feel like if I wear cool tone blushes too much, my skin just looks really like sallow and dead. So I like wearing a warmer tone blush usually to kind of just balance out my skin because I do wear like a cool to neutral foundation. So my foundation matches my face. Um, for sure, but I like wearing more warm tone everywhere else as a nice contrast because I feel like if I wear too much cool tone everywhere, I look freezing. Um, like anything that's too cool pink, I'm not a huge fan of anymore. I used to like oogle at cool pink blushes, but now I'm just like, why? Why? I know I used to have like a cool tone pink Illamasqua cream blush way back in the day when Illamasqua was at their peak. Are they still around? Are Illamasqua still a thing? I'm not sure. So love this blush. I mean, a handful of y'all said in my video yesterday that you bought the monochromatic blushes because of me. So I'm uh, predictable at this point. Predictable indeed. Also predictable. I'm wearing my Bezos guillotine earrings because Amazon is doing the shadiest shit right now. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> so those are all my blushes. Those are my blushes ranked, my blush collection in a nutshell. Um, let me know if you've tried any of these and if you like them, what are your favorite blushes? Let me know in the comments down below. Today's song of the day is, I was going down a rabbit hole of like old school music yesterday, like early 2000s shit like the most early 2000s shit. You should go see my live stream from Wednesday because I went down a rabbit hole of old music and it was hilarious. Song of the day is Megalomaniac from Incubus. Um, it's off their record, A Crow Left of the Murder, which I own. I also didn't realize at the time that um, a group of crows is called a murder of crows. So the more you know, but yeah, Megalomaniac. It's a perfect song for right now because what's happening right now? <laughs> Mm. The world is on fire. I really hope everybody's paying attention as much as they can and staying informed because holy shit, what is happening? So yeah, your song of the day is Megalomaniac from Incubus. Enjoy, enjoy the early 2000s nostalgia. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more of my content, please hit that subscribe button. I'm less than a hundred subscribers away from 46,000 and it would be super fucking cool if I could get to 50,000 by my birthday, which is at the end of May in just over a month. So if you're new here and would like to see more of me, please subscribe, that would be awesome. If you do like ASMR, I uploaded a new ASMR video there on Wednesday. Uh, you could check out my ASMR channel. That'll also be a link in the description. And also it's linked on my channel too. Thanks so much to my patrons. As always, I appreciate y'all so much. Y'all are great. Our Discord's a good time. I hope you all are healthy. I hope you all are staying safe and social distancing and leaving your house as little as possible and grocery shopping once a week. I hope I, I'm thinking of all of you who are still out there working, people who are working in essential businesses. 
thank you for holding it down and for keeping the country and the world going. I appreciate you far more than anybody up at the top because yeah, like what the fuck is happening? That's it for me. I will see you all uh, tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.